Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet a thank you pin. These are little pins that I've made using some scrap yarn and a button. Here's another version that I've made. And all it is, essentially, it's a super easy pattern. And it's a great beginner pattern also. And all it is is a circle with another circle layered on top. And then it's finished off by a button. So it's a great way to use up some extra yarn and maybe a special singular button that you may have laying around or one that may have gotten separated from the others and now you just have a one-of-a-kind button to use. For this project, you'll need some yarn. You'll need um, either the yarn that is recommended on the, the label. I used a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook for my particular yarn. And you'll also need a pair of scissors and tapestry needle to finish your work and to sew it together and to sew the button on. Then you'll also need a pin backing or a safety pin. Either one is fine. You can find the pin, uh, they're usually called bar pins in the craft store. I'm gonna show you just with a simple safety pin to keep this easy and straightforward. You'll also need one button Per pin. And I wanted to mention as well, you can use scrap yarn or, because we're calling this the thank you pin, I named it that because uh, I recently wrote my 500th blog post and I wanted to um, give you all a little freebie as a thank you. So this is my thank you to you. However, when you make yours, you can make yours to obviously thank someone. These also make great little quick projects. You can make them in school colors or team colors uh, as a thank you maybe at the end of the school year or the end of a sports season. You can wear them to show your team spirit at a game or something like that. And they're very easy. You could even get some people together and just have a little crochet party and make some for your team or for the teachers at school or something like that. So let's get started. We're going to begin by making this larger bottom circle than the smaller uh, next circle in our layer. And then we're going to finish it off by attaching everything together and sewing the button. So let's get started. I have here, and again, you can use any yarn you want and any hook you want. Just check your yarn label uh, for the hook recommendation. This is just some uh, Dream in Color yarn. It's single ply variegated. That I love, I had on hand, I love the colors. And then this is some Knit Picks uh, Capra. I think this is called the Fairy Tale Colorway. It's a cashmere blend and it's wonderful stuff. But this is just what I had on hand. Again, use whatever you want. So let's get some of our supplies out of the way here. So let's begin. We're gonna start with the bottom most circle. We're gonna kind of replicate this particular pin here. So let's pull out some yarn. We're going to begin by putting a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers and make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your crochet hook, and bring up that loop. And you're just going to tighten it onto your hook. We're going to start by chaining four. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. Next, we're going to work a slip stitch in the chain that's farthest from our hook. And I'll just zoom in a little so you can see everything. There we go. To work a slip stitch, insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop, then just simply bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. Just like that. So we have our circle. This is where we're going to be working all the stitches. You can kind of open it up a little bit if you need to. Next, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to work, if you think about a wheel, we're going to have 12 spokes on our wheel. So this chain four that we just did counts as one of the spokes, if you will. So we're going to make 11 more double crochets into the center of the ring to give us a total of four, uh, I'm sorry, 12 spokes on our wheel. 
To make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook, hook into the center of the ring, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Double crochet. So we're going to do this 10 more times. So this is two, and then three, four, just going to keep going all the way, way around, five. So we're coming up to the end, we're just working a double crochet, and this is 12, okay? So our starting chain of four counted as a double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I also wanted to mention the tail when we started, if you hold it along the ring as you're working the stitches, it will weave in that tail as you go along. It makes things a lot easier. You can eliminate some weaving in at the end. So to complete our ring, the first round of our ring, we're going to close it up with a slip stitch. So insert your hook into the chain. Then work a slip stitch to close it. So it should look like that. Next, we're going to work the second round of our circle. So we're going to chain four again. One, two, three, and four. In this first space, you'll want to locate the first space here. We're going to work a double crochet. And then in each space after, when I'm saying space, I mean in between these, when we made our double crochets, call these a post, in between these posts is a space. You're just going to work your stitches right into those spaces. So we're going to work two double crochets in each space. Next space, two double crochets, and we're just going to do this all the way around the entire circle. And as we're working this circle, the, the variegated yarn is displaying all of its colors. So we're just coming up to the end of the circle, and in the last space, working two double crochets, the same we've done all the way around. And then we can close our circle by working a slip stitch, and our circle is complete. So it looks just like our other circle. So you can take your scissors at this point, break the yarn, then we can get our, our variegated yarn out of the way. And then you'll just fasten it off, just like that, and trim this end right here. And then you can take your tapestry needle and just weave in the end. I like to go in one direction just through the stitches. I like to go in one direction and then come back in the other direction just to lock that tail into place. Just like that. Then you can take your scissors and just trim that tail. So we can take our circle and just kind of put it aside for now. Then we'll take the other yarn that we've selected and we're going to make the next layer of our pin, this circle right here. I'm not sure if the color is coming across, but this is a really wonderful raspberry color. So we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. And this is just worked the same way as the other circle that we've just done, but just one round. We're just going to work the first round of that circle. Okay, there we go. We put a slip knot on our hook, and again, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. Work a slip knot in the chain farthest from the hook to create our ring. We can kind of open that ring. And again, we're going to hold the tail along the edge here so we can weave in the ends as we go. 
Next, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to work, this counts as a double crochet. So we'll work 11 more double crochets into the ring to make a circle and have 12 uh, spokes on our wheel, if you will. So work a double crochet into the center of the ring and just repeat this all the way around. So this is three, four, 11, and 12. So here's our circle. Then we're just gonna join to close with a slip stitch. Just like that. Then we can take our scissors, break the yarn, fasten it off. So our circle is complete. You can take this tail, again, we wove it in as we went along, that center tail. You can pull it tight, trim with your scissors, save these scraps for other projects if you need to stuff a pillow or a toy or something. So we have this tail here. I'm going to keep this tail intact and kind of shape up our circle. All right, so we need to layer everything together and assemble. So we have the larger circle, the smaller circle, and the button. So let's grab our button. I have here, um, this was a metal kind of, let's zoom in a little. This is kind of a metal filigree button that I had. And I use, this is uh, like a recycled, um, it looks like some plastic. I think it, it had some coconut wood in it, if I remember correctly. So you can use all kinds of buttons. I also have here a little shell button. It has some, it actually has some pretty texture on the back, but we're gonna use the, the kind of iridescent shell side. I got this at the craft store. I think I got all of these. This might have actually been from a garment, an old garment. Whenever you buy um, an article of clothing that comes with an, a spare button, you can throw it in your your button organizer, and this was actually from a garment long ago, and I, I think I had the spare button that I kept, and it actually came in useful for this project. So we're gonna layer our circles, and you can thread your tapestry needle. If you've cut your tail too short, it's no problem at all. You can just cut a new piece of yarn and thread it that way. So we're just gonna go in and just kind of go around the perimeter of the circle here. And because we're using our tail, our yarn already matches. So that makes it easy. Mine's just a little bit short. So I might have to come in with some more yarn, but we'll see how far we get with this, this yarn tail. I should have left mine a little bit longer, but that's okay. Whenever you're sewing things with yarn, it's very, very forgiving because the yarn is a lot chunkier than thread and you can um, hide a little bit more in those fluffier stitches. With sewing, it, it shows a lot more. But you still, regardless, you still want to be nice and neat with your work. So we've made it all the way across with our little tiny tail. And I'm just going to cut another piece of yarn of the, the matching yarn to sew the button. So we're just going to thread it. And if you had some length, you could also sew the button with your tail, but I ran out of space. Actually, I also have, depending on the button holes that you have, um, my larger tapestry needle is not going to fit. So I'm going to use a smaller tapestry needle to do that. Okay, so what you'll want to do is just thread it, put your button on top, looks just like our other pin, and then just come up from the bottom. There we go. My, uh, even though I'm using the smaller tapestry needle, my buttonhole is still a little tight. So you're just going to come up from the bottom 
and then go back down and we're using matching yarn you can use the variegated yarn or either one we've used and we're just gonna come through my buttonholes are kind of snug there and then you'll do that a few times maybe like two or three times and it looks pretty when you can see the matching yarn in the center then after you've done that a few times you can take your tails in the back we can kind of double up with this one and then just tie them just like that just tie a little knot on the back and this side will be against the garment I also wanted to mention you could also use this as an applique on a cardigan or some other garment or a bag and then for your your pin backing you can use a fancy bar pin at the craft store I'm going to use just a safety pin you can either just we, we're going to leave our tails on there for just a minute you can either just pin it right on to what you're using you can sew it if you're using it as an applique or you can take your let's trim these two little tails here you can trim those and I left this tail on here you can sew it right on the, the uh, bar pin backing or the safety pin let's close this so I don't poke myself so you can take your your safety pin or your your pin backing and then just run just come under the yarn and under the metal like that and just run a few stitches just right along the back and make sure there we go the, the part that opens is not being sewn down the part that's stationary on a safety pin is being sewn down so you'll be able to open it and close it so we're just going to come across just put a few well placed stitches all the way up just like that so you have a little pin there then you can come through another loop on the back of the piece just to make a knot then you'll I like to make lots of knots you don't want to make too many it'll look kind of sloppy but I like mine to be nice and secure especially if it's something you're going to be wearing then when you're finished and everything's nice and knotted you can take your tail and just kind of weave it in as you normally would just through the back here so it looks nice and neat I went in one direction then came back in the other direction then you can just trim your tail kind of straighten everything out and your pin is complete so that is how you crochet the thank you pin or applique whatever you'd like to use it for so thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest fiber flux video updates thanks again